no one wants to be stagnant in life. We all want to move forward and we earnestly anticipate this. This is great as the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. This shows that after some time God will want us to move to a better place than we are right now. Write this in the comment section God is preparing me for my next level. This video shows you three signs that God is preparing you for your next level. Sign 1. Challenges come your way. Challenges are a stepping stone to another level. You can't go anywhere without passing through challenges. It's like a law of life. Remember that before you move to a new class or move to a different level, you have to take tests or exams. And if you want to pass these tests or exams, you have to prepare for them. For instance, Job. When God wanted to increase him, Job passed through the worst situation that anyone could pass through. He lost his wealth and his children, he was sick, his wife was irritated and told him to curse God and die, and his friends tried to blame him for what was happening. Amazing. It was like the entire earth was against him. Job had a very hard time, just like many of us are right now. It's like the world is against us and we are like, God, are you even there? And it seems God is all silent on us and we have to go through everything on our own. Sometimes it's our marriages or relationships, our health, finances and other areas that just seem so tough all of a sudden. We shouldn't be discouraged. It's a sign that God is preparing you for your next level. Sometimes these challenges may not even be external, they might be internal like a sin we are struggling with. For example, we may be struggling with certain addictions and we are trying our best to overcome them. Do you know sometimes you might be living with a sin that may not be so obvious to you or may not look so bad, it may just look to you like a little compromise that doesn't hurt anyone. Then after a while you begin to feel bad about these sins and you just don't want to partake of it anymore. And you're like struggling with it, trying to find a way to end it. It's not just you. It's God saying this has got to go. It can't come into the promised land because it'll ruin you. Like the children of Israel, they couldn't enter into the promised land because of their constant complaining, murmuring, grumbling and lack of trust in God. God gave them time to change, but they were so caught up in their today, they refused to think about tomorrow. This might be God's word for someone right now. Are you so caught up in your now that you're entertaining compromises that may stop you from entering your promised land in the future? You have to be like Job who didn't know what was happening yet he chose to trust God. Challenges will come and go but what will make the difference is getting the best out of those challenges. Everyone who can overcome a challenge is surely moving to the next level. Because Job held on to the end, God gave him twice what he had before and he lived long enough to enjoy it. This might be the season where God wants to take you to the next level. Don't run away from those challenges. Instead, ask God for strength to take you through those challenges. Sign 2. There will be an emphasis on humility and discipline. In my opinion, any Christian who can master the art of humility and discipline in the things of God is a Christian who will do very great things for God. God will need you to improve in these areas. And these are part of the reasons He sends challenges your way. If you are serious and you want to use God's methods to overcome your challenges, they will help you in humility and discipline. God loves humble people. Most people have never really taken the time to think about why God loves humble people. Humble people are sincere people. This isn't a matter of saying the truth at all times, but that deep in their hearts, they realize one profound truth from Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. It says, Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts God knows we can do nothing without him and humble people know and acknowledge this. This is why God loves them so much. They may not be the most perfect people but they're people who will always rely on God's power and strength and this is why God always lifts them. God was mad at the children of Israel when they said they were like grasshoppers in the eyes of the Canaanites. 
They didn't lie, they told the truth. So why was God angry? Because he wanted them to rely on him and not on their strength. He just showed them ten plagues in Egypt amid many other miracles, so why won't they trust in him? Are you like the children of Israel who'd rather trust in your little abilities that will take you nowhere? Or you want to be like David who as a teenager defeated a giant? David never told the giant, oh I practiced and because I'm so skilled I'm going to kill you. No instead, he said in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45. You come to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David was humble before the Lord and not in his abilities and the Lord rewarded him even as he fought Goliath. Before we continue, we are inviting you to join our WhatsApp community through the link in the description box. Thank you. Remember God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. On the other hand, discipline is also key. God doesn't want his children to behave in a manner that doesn't give him glory. He wants us to build discipline so we can remain in the position he is giving us. King Saul wasn't disciplined. He lacked patience, and he offered sacrifices instead of waiting for Samuel. Saul didn't know that he was given a test and he failed in that area. God removed the kingdom from him and gave it to David instead. David wasn't perfect but did his best to be humble and disciplined. We must be humble and disciplined in prayer, fasting, Bible study, and other things God requires us to do. Sign 3. Transformation of the Mind The whole goal of whatever God is doing with us is not for us to have more money or cars or houses. The whole goal is to become like Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. This is the way God can have the highest glory when we all reveal Jesus and glorify him. Imagine if we were all like Jesus. Then it would be heaven on earth. There would be no stealing, lying, poverty or sickness. Everyone would be perfectly fine just seeking the will of God. We need to grow to be mature in Christ. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The Bible emphasizes changing our thinking patterns. This is called the process of transformation. We need to have the mindset of Christ Jesus. It is only when we have Christ's mentality that we can step into the next level that he has for us. When you keep talking down on yourself and saying things like I'm not good enough, I don't deserve this and all of that, it keeps weighing you down. You usually say what you think. So when you say you are not good enough, you mean it. You must be careful to think of yourself the way Christ thinks of you. And usually this is what God will begin to do if he wants you to move to the next level. God knows the importance of our minds in moving us forward. This is because God will not do anything except we allow him to do it. He has given us the power of choice so we can limit God, even if he wants to move us forward. For this not to happen, he will begin to transform our minds so we can see the bigger possibilities and align to our next level. Consider the children of Israel who were in bondage and God wanted to release them. He had to prepare their minds knowing fully well that if the opportunity comes, they won't take it if they keep seeing themselves as slaves. God had to demonstrate first to Moses by showing him various signs before he could lead the people out. After this, God showed ten different plagues to the children of Israel. These plagues were not just a mighty show of his power. If he wanted to, he could have just taken the life of Pharaoh or turned the heart of Pharaoh so he could release the children of Israel. The plagues were a show to prove to the children of Israel that he was able to deliver them. He wanted their mind to change. He wanted them to believe him. In the same way, God wants us to have a certain mindset, and so he brings challenges that help our mind to be transformed, and that's a sign that we are being prepared for the next level. 
Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for your word through this video. We pray that you help us to fully align to everything that you have in store for us. We pray that we continue to let ourselves be malleable as you prepare us for our next level in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. If you're new here, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Returning viewers, remember to spread the love to your friends and family. Support our channel by donating via PayPal account also in the description box. God bless you.